All right, so welcome back, YouTube. Um, I'm just gonna be going in today. Actually, I had another revelation. Um, it's regarding the same thing. Pretty much, God just keeps pointing me back to India. I don't know why. I wasn't gonna do anything about India today at all. So, pretty much, um, I was in prayer time and I spoke to the Lord and I said, you know, Father God, please don't let anything like slow down. I just wanna learn. I wanna, I wanna share the truth, you know? All these uh, Bible verses started to pop into my head and Kanye West. Now, I've been avoiding this topic cause I don't, I just, I really honestly don't care enough. <laughs> I think there's enough spotlight on celebrities that I don't feel like everyone needs to talk about them. Um, but in this simple case, I'm seeing people literally go to this man's church and it's it's a joke. It literally is. And um it's not it's not only the Christians that are going, it's these people, these so called prophets um on YouTube that have millions and thousands of followers like and they're telling everyone that, that, you know, pray for Kanye, he's a good guy. Which, you know, I'm not the judge. I'm not gonna judge anyone, it is not my place. But I will say that I will test the fruits. And I'm gonna do that with pure scripture. And then after that, I'm going to show what the Lord revealed to me just in doing my research to do this. <laughs> Literally, this happened in the last couple hours. Stay tuned. Okay, so we're just basically going to be going into um, some scripture regarding this, uh, this man. So we have 1 Timothy 6 and 10. And it says, for the love of men, uh, the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Okay, that's something you'll see with people with a lot of money is that they are never happy. And we have Matthew 6 and 19. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy it and thieves cannot break in and steal it. Wherever your, tre your, wherever your treasure is, there are the desires of your heart will also be. Okay. And then it just it talks about the light and what your body's filled with. And if you're, okay, let's just read it. Basically, you're either filled with light or darkness. And then this is, this is like legitimate for all these superstars out here. Matthew 6 and 24. I mean, I have many Bible verses written here. Um, I just don't find it necessary to go through all of them. But it says, no one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Okay? Let's just go to the next one for the heck of it. That is why I tell you, do not worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more important than food and your body more important than clothing? But um, this is what this man uh, promotes. And this is the most important, one of the most important. Um, Cause I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna show you a bunch of clips after this that pertains to every single scripture here. So we have Jeremiah 10 and two through four. And it says, this is what the Lord says. Do not act like the other nations. This is for everyone. This is good, okay? Do not act like the other nations 
who try to read their future in the stars. Do not be afraid of their predictions, even though other nations are terrified by them. Their ways are futile and foolish. They cut down a tree and a craftsman and a craftsman carves an idol. They decorate it with silver and gold, with gold and silver, I'm sorry, and then fasten it securely with hammer and nails so it won't fall over. So basically, do not, do, and I have another one. But basically, do not worship God as the other nations do. And you'll find this also in Deuteronomy, uh, I believe 12, 29 through 32. Um, you can also look at Corinthians 6 and 10, Corinthians 10 and 31, uh, Matthew 6 and 24, Matthew 6 and 19. Oh, pretty much Matthew's good, okay? But another one of my favorite ones is for this particular situation here. I can't believe I missed this one. I have two more. Matthew 19. Sorry, I'm looking at a weird angle right now. Was it 19 and 24? This one's a kicker. Okay, so I'll say it again. Oh, wait, wait, no, 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 no. We gotta read more of it than that. Okay, so the rich man. Hmm. The rich man. As you can see, Kanye's still rich. So let's let's go over this. So it says, uh, and this is Matthew 19 and 16 through I don't know yet. And it says, someone came to Jesus with a question. Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Why ask me about what is good? Jesus replied. There's only one who is good. But to answer your question, if you want to receive eternal life, keep the commandments. Which ones? The man asked. Jesus replied, you must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. Honor your mother and fa your father and mother. Love your neighbor as yourself. I've obeyed all these commandments. The young man replied, what else must I do? Jesus told him, if you want to be perfect, go sell all of your possessions and give the money to the poor. You will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But the young man heard this and went away sad, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus turned to his disciple, or said to his disciples, I will tell you the truth, because Jesus is the truth. <laughs> it is very hard for a rich uh, person to enter the kingdom of heaven. I'll say it again. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich person to enter, to enter I'm sorry, the kingdom of God. And then this is the last one. And then I'm going to show you some clips. And then I'm going to show you what the Lord showed me. Because I love to do this because I'm showing you guys how I come to, like, how the Lord speaks to me. Okay? Because I know a lot of people ask me questions about, you know, how do you hear God and stuff like that. And it's really, it's really a mix of things. But sometimes he'll just tell me something. I'll start researching it and then in that research he'll tell me something else and it's amazing sorry I don't have my other phone holder so what did I just do I'll be back and here's the last kicker mark 8 and 36 and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your soul and then let's go on. Is anything worth more than your soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in the glory of his Father 
and holy angels. So, let's go over here, shall we? Kanye West admits nine years ago that he sold his soul to the devil, okay? And of course, everybody. Kanye West admits to selling his soul and sacrificing his mom and plotting to take Michael Jackson's spot, okay? So, this is what's going on in today's society. The man sold his soul, right? And he claims that he loves Jesus, but here's the thing. He still has all these possessions. So let's go here. Let's see. How many houses does this man have? Now, I find it real interesting that someone could be so greedy and um, have you know, three houses and 17 cars, and there's people that can't even eat in the world. You know what I mean? So for you to sit there and say that you love Jesus, you are a liar because Jesus said that you need to love your neighbor more than yourself, okay? We have no problems loving ourselves. This is a very narcissistic age in time. Like, narcissism is an understatement for how just self-absorbed this generation truly is. It says Kanye West just scooped up another $14 million ranch in Wyoming. Huh, here's a look inside the growing real estate portfolio he and Kim Kardashian share. And as you know, Kim Kardashian is probably one of the most money hungry people I've ever met or seen in my entire life, okay? And it says earlier this year, the world's highest paid hip hop artist, Kanye West, splashes out with 14 million, with, uh, I'm sorry, splashed out on a $14 million ranch in Wyoming. The ranch is reportedly, or reportedly spans 1,400 acres in the land of about 75 miles east of Yellowstone Park, right? And then, Bought another one, okay. And congratulations, Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. It says they will be making a combined $222 million alone this year, okay? Collectively worth over $500 million, according to Forbes. Well, congratulations, okay? So these people sold their soul because that's what they chose. You cannot serve two gods. Can't serve God and money. It's one or the other. Okay? Now, also, what irritates me, uh, they have it on the news. It's just like, it's so lovely. Because, it's funny because when you look into the news about uh, these, these gay people, is LGBTQ, whatever, whatever they are, um, all you get is uh, how these pastors are being hated if they don't accept these people in their churches as leaders and whatnot. Like, you know, it's one thing if, if you wanna if you wanna change, like, you know what I mean? Um, because it's not okay for anyone to lust, according to the Bible. It doesn't matter what you're lusting after or who you're lusting after, it's not allowed. And with this man, he's being glorified. So that should already be a red flag. It should already be a red flag because it's clear that people do not like Christians. And this is all around the world. True followers, are, uh, followers of Christ, true set apart people of God are not liked because they're considered judgmental. But it's not us, okay? Don't you think that we Want to have fun too? Like, don't you think? No, but we cannot serve two gods, okay? You cannot serve your fleshly desires and love God all in the same, okay? You either love one or, or you love the other. And I, for one, choose God. And the Bible is, is what they want to take it up with. But listen, watch. Headlines for a growing movement known as Kanye's Sunday 
service, a fusion of gospel, rap, and God, drawing believers and non-believers to weekly sermons. But with West's newly released album, Jesus is King, is it a ploy to sell records or to start something much bigger than that? We sent Fox News religion analyst Jonathan Morris on a special assignment to get the story. Morning, King Christians, um, who come Let's together. listen to this, right? So, okay, people. so I'm, I'm here to expose demons, okay? That's all I can do. That's all, like, I can't. I'm itching. When I saw this, I was just done, okay? But trust me, please stay tuned till after because I'm, I'm showing you guys gold. I'm showing you guys what is going to be introduced into the world. And that's why the Lord said, do not even give the devil an opportunity because the way that they make this sound, the way that it looks, it will fool, it will fool according to Matthew 24, even God's chosen ones, if if they allow it to, okay? So th just listen and see, and then stay tuned for afterwards. Christian, um, who come together on a weekly basis, and they basically just sing praises to the Most High, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I can't get into people's motives of why they're here. We're still praising God. Um, whether you're here to see Kanye or to rock the latest Yeezys or whatever your intentions you are, I think at the end of the day, like, God is still being glorified and there's someone's life being changed. Do you think that in some way this could be a way of bringing people back into faith or spirituality? Hmm. I would say, how many people are you bringing to Christ? Because Kanye is doing she it. She looks so like she has an attitude. Not Completely and utterly. God changes us all and we need him. We're here in Los Angeles and right outside of the forum where mm -hmm. Jesus is king. And we've been interviewing people as they go in about to see Kanye West, but in a spiritual environment. We're not sure what's going to happen, but we're going to find out. I just want to understand exactly what I... Mm -hmm. um, well, I thought it was a pop artist. Okay, so these two go for the first time, okay? They look like... I don't know. Okay, so, you know... I don't like to judge, but we're allowed to righteously judge. And they both look like they're high, okay? They're young teenagers. They're chilling. They just went to go see a concert in their own eyes. They've never been to church, apparently. And what this little boy says is that it was a totally different experience, not like a regular church setting and it has been transformed. That is exactly what Alice Bailey wanted to happen, okay? If you don't know, please watch. Um, yeah, I mean, everyone has a video. I mean, not everybody, but a lot of people have a video out there, and so do I, about the UN and this woman's master Satanist plan um, for the 10 points, right? Now, Here's here's the next thing I saw, right? So I just was doing a regular Google of this dude, you know, and I see that he has, right? So after Jesus is King album, Yondi album, right? Now, I don't follow these people, so you guys are probably like, duh, you know? I don't, I'm not, like, I don't, I don't care. I don't care about celebrity life. Don't follow them. I don't care about them like they are stars okay they already gave themselves for money I don't know how selling your soul really works but I am assuming that if you sell your soul to the devil for treasures and you want it back then you will no longer have those treasures because that would mean that you give it back I don't know so these people are fooling the nations and they're living terrible lives of doctrines of devils. And there's also in scripture that talks about, you know, just abstain from every evil and that, that they do unjust things in the darkness. Like they just, you know, well, this is where it's going to get crazy. So Yandi... So I'm like, hmm, that sounds like Gandhi. But here's the thing, I don't really, like, I don't really know too much about Gandhi. Like, I just, I know of him, but I don't really know 
all that he did and all that he was or anything like that. Um, so I wanted to look into it because I was like, oh, so what is he trying to do now? Like, you know, I knew I knew it was some type of new age stuff. I just I knew that it was something that's going back to India. And I just keep going back in circles with India. I've had it. <laughs> I just something significant is going to happen in India. And I just I don't know what. But as you can see, the Lord keeps steering me in that direction. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is what he, what he believes in. Like, so, well, I watched the video first. And, and he seems like a really nice guy. He seems like a really nice guy. And I've, I've heard that in the past, and I've known that in the past, but um, my eyes have been completely, like, opened uh, within these last few years in particular. Um, I've always loved God and I, for 11 years, I've been a follower of Christ, but um, like the Lord has opened my eyes very recently and I just see things in a different light. So stay tuned and I'm going to show you some of these videos so you can see where I'm coming from. Okay, so... As you can see, we have a lot of red flags here. Gandhi is being compared to Jesus, y'all. <laughs> He's being compared to Jesus. They're actually making him seem like he knows more about Christianity and that he is more Christian-like even than Christians. Please tell me how that's possible if the man hasn't accepted Jesus into his heart as his savior, please tell me how. So long story short, the man was basically kicked off of a, a train. It was basically like a Rosa Parks scenario. And he decided to lead a human rights movement um, with fasting and prayer. Now, that's just yeah, the gist of it. He was also considered to be like, I believe um, one of his nicknames is Good Soul and the father of India, okay? So this man was just the best thing since sliced bread. But look at this, visualizing the Muslim, the Muslim Gandhi. This is getting very dangerous here. And very recent, up to up to a year ago, four months ago. Do you see this? This is very recent that they're bringing this man back. Okay? I'm going to show you some videos on how persuasive this man truly is. Okay? So they're starting to use him as this Christ-like figure. And here's the thing though, folks, in Revelation, it talks about a lamb-like beast, okay? He's going to be like a lamb. He's going to be so sweet and tender, all about peace and justice and human rights and civil rights and all. It's going to be persuasive. That's all I'm saying, okay? We all look at the Pope and we're all disgusted by him, but let Gandhi come along or someone like him, and but he sounds like he really knows what he's talking about. So let's get into it, okay? So this is what Yeezy is promoting. He's promoting a new age movement. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what he believes in. Guys, what have I been saying? Now, if you haven't seen my previous video, previous videos about what they practice in India and how all roots are leading back to India with CERN and Shiva and with every other culture and they have a destroyer. And in biblical times and Revelation in particular, it talks about the destroyer, how his name is Abaddon and Apollyon and he has many other names. This man believes in this. 
This lecture is on Hindu practices and experiences, but we're going to approach the topic by way of the life of the man who is often called the father of modern India. He's very often now called Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma is not a proper name, but it's a title. We've already seen the word Atman for soul, and then Maha means great. So Mahatma means great soul. And this title was applied to him not just after his death, but as early as the year 1914. He was born in the state of Gujarat, which is in western India, to Vaishnava Hindu parents who worshipped Vishnu and his avatars Krishna and Rama. He was married at a young age. He was married at Okay, so as you can see, he worships the Hindu gods. Shiva, Krishna, and Rama. I have a video about that, about how... Christians are leaving their faith because they believe because they they believe that those three deities are no different than the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So you have Christians coming to India to worship. You have Catholics leaving their faith, coming to worship, okay? This new age stuff. And then you have also the Prophet Muhammad, okay? does the same thing and that's where it links up with Muslim and Muslim Islam is the one of the biggest if not the biggest next to Catholicism and Hinduism which is all the same in new age okay the biggest religions in the world and they're trying to get Christians to link up with this whole scenario all right, so which one should we put on first? Uh, let's start with this one. Is there no sound? I don't know what this is. All right, I don't know why it's like not having any sound. Oh, I didn't press play. Oh. All right, there we go, sorry. Asking, it is a longing of the soul. It is daily admission of one's weakness. It is better in prayer to have a heart without words then words without a heart god has no religion and as true as this is god has no religion you can see that there's one face to this though and it's clearly marketing the upcoming new age and the new world order now here, as you can see, this is, this is, it looks like Chinese and Japanese, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. And then, okay, so as you can see what's going on here, it's a red flag. Let's see. Okay. Now this one's very interesting. This one, Gandhi has advice for Christians. message for Christians from an Indian Hindu. From an Indian Hindu. Mahatma Gandhi was a 20th century humanitarian and political legend. He had some insightful suggestions that all Christians could learn from. E. Stanley Jones, Christian missionary to India, once asked Gandhi the following question. How can we make Christianity naturalized in India? Not a foreign thing, identified with a foreign government and a foreign people, but a part of the national life of India and contributing its power to India's uplift. Jones was genuinely trying to learn something new from the man who had become a good friend to him. Gandhi apparently responded to this question without hesitation. 
offering four pieces of advice. He's quoted as saying, First, I would suggest all of you Christians, missionaries and all, must begin to live more like Jesus Christ. Sounds good. Second, practice your religion without adulterating it or toning it down. Sounds even better. Third, emphasize love and make it your working force. For love is central in Christianity. Starting to get a red flag. Fourth, study the non-Christian religions more sympathetically to find the good that is within them in order to have a more sympathetic approach to the people. There you go. Basically, accept everyone for who they are and what they believe in and what they want to do. Wasn't that lovely? Who does that sound like? Oh yeah, it sounds like the Pope. It says, oh, the world thirsts for peace. Pope tells religious leaders. Okay, let's just compare notes. It says, Pope Francis urges faith leaders to pray for an end to religious fanaticism. I really hope I pronounced that right. At the 30th annual World Day of Prayer. Abbiamo sette di pace. Abbiamo il desiderio di testimoniare la abbiamo oh, yeah. So he says, we thirst for peace. Uh, we want to be the witnesses of peace, we mainly need to pray for peace. Okay, and he just keeps going. What else is he saying? You know, it's just a bunch of hoopla anyway. All right. Never can God's name be used to justify violence. Only peace is saint. Only peace is saint, not war. Okay, well, you need to tell the Christian Crusades that, bro. You know what I mean? So this, as you can see, is what's going on. This is how they're going to introduce this false religion. And and it's it's good. It's a good plan, I, I have to say. They're, they're something else. Look at them. They're clueless, all of them. Well, not all of them, but most of them. Pope knows what's going on. But, um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's getting to a point where we've really got to buckle down in our Bible because if, if I wasn't studying in the Bible, they would have got me a little bit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they would have got me a little bit because they have you thinking that, you know, that's when they bring that love. Like, I read the Pope's, like, plan and and his plan to brainwash children okay i'm saying it the the real way his way was very sugar-coated he said that we need to train children um we need it he said something about sending out leaders to train children about peace and love and how to be accepting of that word accepting is a red flag word okay it is an absolute red flag. When you hear peace, red flag. That's what the Lord said. He said that when you hear peace and security, sudden disaster is going to strike. It's going to be terrible. Okay? And we've been hearing peace for a little while. It's, it's been a little while that we've been hearing that, that peace and security. And we're starting to see things unfold quickly. Like, like the Lord talks about a scroll rolling. It is unrolling. It is unraveling very quickly. And I just feel like it is my duty to, and I'm glad that the Lord's sharing this with me. I'm so thankful. They, the God is so good. God is so good because this is not negative, guys. This is not negative. This is, this is good stuff. This is good. Praise God because we're not going to be in trouble. Like, you know what I mean? 
We see this. We see what's going on. We know. We know better now. We know better. We see what's coming, you know? The only way that you can prepare for something is by knowing what the enemy's plan is. And now that we know what the enemy's plan is, then we're going to see it. Like, we're going to know. You know what I mean? But, yeah. I mean, another red flag, just for you, you guys out there, anyone, even a new, oh, a new Christian, God bless your heart. If you are new or... You are um, kind of like a novice with the with the Bible. Um, I would ooh, I would highly suggest that you just start with Jesus's teachings. Highly suggest uh, Matthew, the book of Matthew, because this is a crucial time, and we need to get well acquainted in what is right and what is wrong. Um, but for the newbies out there and even, you know, everyone, just myself included, um, when you see people flocking to one person or to one area, most likely that's wrong. That's why God says do not follow what the nations do. Okay? When you see all these churches on TV with uh, Benny Hinn, and all, all, the, all these other people out there, Kanye West. Oh, by the way, Kirk Franklin, do you know that he had Snoop Dogg? I did not know this. Snoop Dogg made a gospel God, <laughs> release a couple years ago. That's a joke. Um, that man gives me the creeps. <laughs> that man gives me the creeps, okay? I know something unholy is in that man, like hardcore. But, yeah, like, you just see what's going on here. And if you see people flocking to one area, and you see all these people, like, the Pharisees were, were gathered amongst themselves, and they said about Jesus, because they were talking, they were gossiping about Jesus, and they said, look at him, he sits with such scum, you know? And, and I have a parallel, I talk about parallels in my other videos, if you're new out there, and if you haven't seen my Son of Man video, you should probably watch it, Son of God, Son of Man, because the Son of Man, or the example of the Antichrist figure, will hang out with scum, okay? He will be chilling with scum, and as you can see, all these people flock together like two birds of a feather, chilling, uh, with the same doctrine. So, um, God bless you guys. And I'm just, I'm shedding light out there. I want everybody to know the truth. I want everyone to be blessed. And God bless you guys. And I'm so happy to share this with you. All right, bye.